Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical. It has been said that the AR-15 is like adult Legos or tactical Legos, but building guns has been a great American pastime since before our country was a country. And it is totally legal to do. And so I wanna talk about that in today's video because I've had a lot of uh, comments lately, people asking me like, what AR-9 is that? Or I actually had someone in a video recently, you didn't even tell us what that rifle is, or what model it is, what it's called. Well, that's because it doesn't really have a name. It's, it's my dream rifle. And that's because I like to build my ARs. And so in this video, I wanna talk about why, but I also wanna talk about how easy it is and show you guys which tools you need to build an AR because you don't really need much, contrary to popular opinion. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed and we're going to talk building guns. Guns are fun. Shooting guns is fun. Customizing building guns is fun. It's a really good time. So not only is it, you know, something where you are exercising your rights under the second amendment of the U S constitution, not only is it protecting your family and your home, but it's a fun hobby. It's a fun pastime and it's a great way to spend all your money. <laughs> Which, that, believe me, you can easily do that. It's an expensive hobby, but it is a really good time. And it's very satisfying. And to me, one of the things that I have found to be the most satisfying when it comes to the firearms hobby is building my own guns. Specifically ARs, but you could build other guns as well. You could definitely build Glocks. I built out this PSA dagger from parts. I basically built out my EDC. It was a, uh, you know, a regular SIG P365, and it's something totally different now. And that's the really cool thing about guns, especially modern guns, they're very modular. And the AR-15 specifically is extremely modular. Out of five ARs that I own, three of them I built from stripped receivers, the two that I bought have been totally customized, but I think that building them makes a lot more sense than buying and then customizing. I don't know about you guys, but I've had my bank account hacked three times just in the last year. I get spam calls all the time. I've had to get new debit cards because it's been such a problem. And that's why I am partnering with Aura. I'm pretty careful about not putting my information out there, but <laughs> I Googled my email address and there was still tons of stuff about me. Luckily, a lot of it was Sawtooth Tactical. Data brokers literally have all of your information, your full name, your email, your home address, and those of your family, and they sell them to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who might wanna target you. That's why I'm using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are using my information and selling it and automatically submits opt-out requests on my behalf. Check out how many data brokers Aura found that were selling my information. Cleaning up my information helps reduce the amount of spam phone calls and stuff like that I get, and it also protects me from hackers that could use this information to access my social media, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. And Aura does so much more to protect me and my family from threats that I can't even see. Aura is very easy to set up. I don't have to download several different apps for things like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more. I can get it all in one place for one affordable price. You might already have one or two of these tools, but not having Aura is like locking the front door, but leaving the back door wide open. Aura is always on doing the hard work so that I can focus on other things like building this YouTube channel or whatever else that I want to deal with instead of protecting my own personal privacy. I value my privacy and I value yours. You can go to aura.com slash sawtooth tactical to get your own two week free trial. I'll have a link down below in the description. The reason that I've been holding this nine millimeter AR so far the whole time in this video is because this was my very first AR build. And I felt like a nine millimeter build was a good way to go for a first one. 
part of the reason at the time I just really wanted a PCC, I was looking at buying one. Um, but that's when I decided to build because my local gun store, Guffy's Gun and Pawn, uh, carries a lot of aero precision parts. And the EPC-9, which is basically what this is, was one of the PCCs that I'd been looking at. And they had like most of the parts right there in the store. They had the upper, lower receiver, they had hand guards, they had the nine millimeter bolt. And of course they have Glock parts, which it takes Glock magazines. And so it made it really easy for me. And this is where I'm gonna to get to my first point about why building is so good. I didn't have a couple thousand dollars to spend on an entire gun at the time, but I could afford a stripped lower receiver. And that's one of the great things about building is each time I want a new AR, well, what gets me started is the lower receiver. I go out and bite the bullet, so to say, and I get a lower receiver. And then at that point, I'm committed to the build and the rest of the parts will follow. I do think that a nine millimeter build is a great first build uh, because it is simple. Um, generally, they are direct blowback, so there is no gas system that you have to worry about. Not that the gas system is difficult by any means. Really, none of it is difficult. And it takes a very minimal collection of tools. And so I wanna get into that. But I do think that if you are gonna build an AR9, make sure you do a little bit of research first because it's not as standardized as a regular 5.56 or even 300 Blackout AR. And we'll get into 300 Blackout 2 in a minute because you can basically build it out of the same exact parts as your 5.56 gun. It just uses a different barrel. But if you are gonna build a nine millimeter, just research which parts go together because that is important. You do need a heavier buffer and spring uh, for the direct blowback action to work. One of the things that I think intimidates a lot of people into maybe not starting uh, to build their own ARs is uh, I've seen a lot of people on the internet uh, put out information out there that I don't think is necessarily true. They say that you need to spend, you know, a thousand dollars or more on tools just to be able to build an AR the right way. Well, I disagree. Now, you are gonna need some tools, but as long as you're relatively handy and you probably already have some tools, things like, you know, Allen wrenches, uh, Torx, you're gonna want Torx, things like that. You need those for certain little things, mostly just things like mounting optics and stuff though, honestly. So you probably already have those. You do need an armorer's wrench, but you know what? All I ever really use on it is the castle nut wrench. And you're gonna use that to tighten up your castle nut on your receiver extension or your buffer tube. Other than that, you know, regular wrenches will work for things like muzzle devices, stuff like that. And then the other thing that you really do need, and this, this is true if you want your gun to be built correctly, you do need a torque wrench. Now, there are expensive ones, or you can get one like this. This did not cost me much money. In fact, I'll put a link down below in the description to where you can pick this up. I can't remember exactly what the price is off the top of my head, but you'll see it's not very expensive. But you need this so that you can torque certain things to spec, specifically your barrel nut. It is important that you torque that to spec and that you use aeroshell grease on it. You know, there are certain things that you do have to do the right way and all of the information is out there as far as how to do those things the right way YouTube won't let us show how to build guns on that on the YouTube platform anymore, but there are still tons of videos up that show each step of the process and how to do it right. I think 300 Blackout is a really great build to do uh, for a couple reasons. For one, most of the good 300 Blackout guns that you can buy as full guns out there are pretty expensive, and at least the good ones are. But for two, it's a very easy build also. There aren't really any proprietary 300 Blackout parts necessarily except for the barrel. 300 Blackout uses the same bolt carrier group as your standard 5.56 AR, 
because 300 Blackout was designed to be able to shoot out of an AR-15, and so it uses the same case head size. It's the same bolt. It does need a 300 Blackout barrel. You use a pistol length gas system, but that's about it. Other than that, you can use all the same parts that you would for any other AR-15, and so the parts are plentiful, easy to find, and you can choose exactly what you want. And so I think that if you have, you know, if so far all you have is a 5.56 AR, well then I think a 300 blackout build is a great one to get your feet wet. You know, especially if you don't want to do like a nine millimeter build, like I said, a 300 blackout is a really easy one to do. It uses the same buffer tuning for the most part. I had to use a little bit lighter buffer and spring to reliably run subsonic ammo through mine. Um, but that's, those are easy things. And those are the things that you're going to find out that are going to teach you about your gun and make it so that you understand your gun and the way it works better, which is one of the big benefits to building is you really get a good understanding of how all the parts work together. And so then if you do have a problem, you know how to fix it. I think that one of the biggest benefits to building your own gun is that you can really choose all of the parts that you want the first time. When you buy a factory made gun out of the box and then you start upgrading it, customizing it, I think that it ends up costing you more in the long run because you end up buying certain parts twice. You change out a handguard, well then you've bought that original handguard that was on the gun and then you've bought a new handguard. Um, and then <laughs> when it comes to certain things, like I don't have it behind me, but my very first AR, it was a bare bones Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport 2. And getting off that pinned front sight block or gas block front sight post, that was a nightmare, especially at the time, not having any of the correct tools. You will need some punches and things. That's one thing I meant to mention earlier. <laughs> punches and a little hammer, stuff like that. Getting that front sight gas block off was a total nightmare, as was uh, the barrel nut on that thing. It was tough. And when you build, you don't have to worry about taking things apart that were put together in a factory with who knows what red Loctite rock set, what kinds of ridiculous torque they put on it. You're only putting it together and not taking it apart, which to me is a lot easier as far as what my own personal experience has been. But again, you can pick the parts that you want and then so it kind of doesn't cost you as much money because you're only buying each part one time. You don't end up like me where you've got, dude, I've got parts everywhere a lot of which I'll probably never use again. And you don't have to pay for it all at once. That's one of the biggest benefits. Buy a lower receiver, and like I said, then you're committed to the build, but you don't have to build it fast. You can buy the next part, you know, get your trigger two months down the road if that's what it takes to be able to then afford the trigger. You know, get your upper receiver another month down the road. I have a problem where once I buy a lower, I'll start wanting the next part, the next part, the next part right away. This gun, I told myself I was going to take like a year to build it because I wanted to build it with high quality, expensive parts, which I did. But I just, I didn't have the patience. And so as soon as I bought that lower, I started just buying part after part after part, especially too, because I did a build series on the channel. And so I wanted a new episode to come out each week. And so I needed each new part for that. And so I built it a lot faster than maybe you need to. If, uh, if you don't quite have the money for a very expensive rifle right off the bat, you can build it one part at a time and end up with a really, really nice gun that didn't cost you thousands of dollars all at once. If you've been debating building yourself your own firearm, this video is your sign to do that. It is really not that hard. Don't be intimidated. I uh, I thought it was gonna be more difficult than it was before I started my first one, this nine millimeter build, and it's really not. 
you can watch a couple little how to's on YouTube. Like I said, they're still up on the platform, even though we're not allowed to show that anymore. And once you've put together one lower, each time you do a new lower receiver gets easier and easier. The takedown pins are probably the hardest part, but once you figure that out, it's not that difficult. Use a clevis pin, clevis pin. It will make your life way easier. Um, Real Avid does actually make a tool even for doing the takedown and pivot pin, but really go to your local hardware store, buy a clevis pin, the same diameter as your pins, your takedown pins. Just trust me, it'll make your life way easier. You can look that up online too. But once you kind of get the hang of doing a lower, your next build will be easier and easier. And for some reason, people seem to be more intimidated about building uppers. I see a lot of people like put together their lower and then just buy a complete upper. And that's a totally fine way to go, especially if there is an upper that you really like. Like, you know, like a, the Geisley URGI upper is a fantastic upper or their Super Duty or, you know, like the Daniel Defense Mark 18 or the M4A1, they make great uppers. You can definitely just buy a good upper, but there's no reason to be intimidated about doing your upper either. In fact, I honestly think it's easier than the lower. All you're really doing is putting the barrel in the upper receiver, torquing down the barrel nut correctly, putting your handguard on, like, it's not difficult. Let me know down in the comments if you build your own guns and what you think about it. If you think that it's worth building over just buying factory made guns, because I do. I honestly don't see myself ever buying a factory AR ever again, but I guarantee you that I will get more ARs. I'm just gonna build them because I think the building process is really fun. It's really satisfying, especially once you get done with your rifle, you take it to the range and you go shoot it for the first time and it runs correctly. That is a fantastic feeling. And if it doesn't run correctly, well, you put it together, you can figure out what's wrong with it diagnose that problem and getting it, get it running perfectly. And that's a satisfying feeling in itself. You can literally be your own gun mechanic, your own gunsmith. Like I had someone ask me on a comment recently, like, oh, you must be a master gunsmith. You built that AR. Like, no, I just, I kind of figured it out along the way and, and it's not that difficult. I think anybody that's a little bit handy can figure out how to build an AR. And I think that if you are into guns, you should definitely look into building yourself your first AR. If you've already been building ARs, use this video as your sign to start building another one. I'm gonna start building a Mark 18, I think soon. It's all just a matter of finances, but uh, I really do wanna build a Mark 18. And especially because I just wanna have a build going. Each time I finish a build, like when I finish this one, I was like, oh, well, now that it's done, I need to get another lower so I can start a new build. <laughs> so let me know down in the comments, like I said, if you build, if you buy, what you think um, is the way to go. And uh, tell me if this video, if you found it, you know, worthwhile to you, give me that like, subscribe to Sawtooth Tactical, share it. And from Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.